What's going on guys? Chris here back again with another market video for you guys today. In this one, I want to give you guys some future stars investments. The reason why I'm making this video at this point is because I think in a few hours time, some of these future star cards are going to start bouncing back up. The supply is going to dry off and investors will be buying into these cards. So that's why I'm giving you guys this video as soon as possible. We're also going to be talking about Friday. Are we going to get a promo? We haven't really got too much information. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about a little bit about Thursday flipping and just maybe why it's not working anymore. Um, and why, you know, over the last couple of months, things are happening where we're not really seeing too much of a rise on the market. So before we get into it today, if you guys can just drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new around here, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Make sure you guys get involved with the free train discord, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Twitch, all of that will be in the description. I would really appreciate it. I fixed the Discord link, so if you guys want to get involved with that, the link will be in the description. All right, let's get into the video. I want to start this off by talking to you guys about some future star investments. I know you guys want to hear this. I like a, t a ton of these cards. I like more cards in this set than I did in set one. Um, a couple cards just off the bat. I bought three Davids. Now, if you can find David in the low 90s, I'm talking like 92 and under, I like it. If you look at David this morning he's been bouncing up and down he went up right away after awards remember we talked to you guys about you know how people wait for awards sometimes to buy some of these promo cards he goes all the way up to 103 he draws back down into like the mid 90s he then rebounds pre marquee matchups to 103 what happened at 6 p.m today we got the party bag sbc and that kind of unraveled the market a little bit and he is now dropped back down with marquee matchup supply. So for me, I like him in the low 90s. I think this card, a lot of people are not really understanding, but this guy gets a strong lead to Renato Sanchez. That's going to go a long way for a car like this, in my opinion, and the stats that he has. I think this would be a really good investment for out of packs. Um, I like this Bastone card. Anything in the, like the 170 and under range, I like it. He's a Serie A center back. We've had some Serie A hype recently. Uh, he's got 80 plus pace. He's got some pretty good defending and physical. I wouldn't mind this card in like the 170 and under. This new house card, uh, we talked to you guys. You know, this card fits a really nice need. He's got 80 plus everything. If you look at the card, he's got a three star skills, four star weak foot, which is what you need in a midfielder, is really a four star weak foot. You don't really care as much about the skills. This card is already starting to bounce a little bit. Anything in like the under 140 range. I think this is pretty good. He's got some really nice stats. And he fits a position in need in that league. You know, because center mids in the Bundesliga, we don't have too many of. Right? You've got that Saboteur SBC that they breezed, released at 600k. Then you have, like, Team with your Kimmich. you got some of his informs and other specials. This card, I think, will do pretty good uh, out of packs. I also like... You know all of the bench options i do and the reason why i do this it, you know every single promo team you look at the bench options and you look at the guys that are going for as least amount as possible and what i look for is okay can i use them in objectives at some point will they be used at some point during the year for something and i do think so right what if we get a mexican objective Linez will fly what if we get like um you know a la liga objective oscar 15k for a card of those stats right you might see that card rise so i think it doesn't you know to club stock these cards the estabinin the Linez, the delo the oscar i think it's good to just club stock these cards i really do i think these cards are gonna rise at some point this year so club stocking them if you want to put a couple on your transfer list you absolutely can Get them at maybe like one or two K under their current price. Line is at 21K. I think it's a little like no risk really for the card he has. The low in like the 33 and under. Oscar at 15K. Esteban in at like 25. I like that a lot for, for just kind of like some no risk uh investments. I do think this Reese James is gonna start bouncing up. Um he's right back card. Uh let me take a look at the price of the right back. He's 710k. People will buy the CDM version of the card. Um, because, you know, yes, he has less pace, uh, but he does get a little bit more shooting, get some more passing, get some more physical and defending as well. So people will buy into this card, I think, um, that CDM Reese James. So I like a ton of these cards. I think that Ruben Diaz might even go up a little bit just because he fits that, 
uh, center back in the Premier League. We obviously had that rubric of Laporte. We've had the center back Walker. We have Van Dyke, but those are all expensive options. So for me, this card, maybe in like the 265, 260 range, if you can find that, that's pretty good. Um, so that's Future Stars Investments. Now looking at, you know, some of these Team of the Weeks from today, uh, let me see if I can find the Team of the Week. Uh, we did see some market movements on these cards. You know, uh, for example, this Muriel. We talked to you guys about it yesterday's video with the Trading and Investment Guide. But Muriel had a nice little kind of market trend. He went from 36k down to 32, went back to 36, down to 34, up at 38, chilled around like 34 for a couple hours, and then rebounded up to almost 38, where now he's coming back down to, well, he's actually 36 now. He was literally just 34. And this is what happens on Thursdays with certain Team of the Week cards. You know, they just hit a low point and people want to use them. You know, if you did watch the video, by the way, we did tell you guys that you could buy a lot of these Team of the Weeks yesterday. I told you about Coates. I really hope that a lot of you guys paid attention because I said this in multiple videos. I'm not trying to big up myself or anything like that, but this is why I think that YouTube is so important to you guys because if you watched yesterday's video and you watched some of the last videos, I talked to you guys about the Future Stars Party Bag. They don't just release one of these. They will release multiple. And what did we get for content today? We got a Future Stars Party Bag SBC. And if you look at the requirements of this Future Stars, um, you know, SBC, where is it right here, right? Is it the same requirements as the last time? It legit is the same requirements. So what did you see happen today? You saw Coates go up 5K, 5 to 7K. You saw Veritu go up a lot. Uh, you saw Hilton go up a little bit. Um, this is why I think the YouTube is just such an important thing for you guys to look at because I point these things out and I want you guys to make coins. And just fodder investing at this point of the year is just really, really good to do. Um, Yerem Chuck, he was like 15 to 16K. He's 23. This Nkuku was like 20K. He's 28, right? This Gomis was 14K, 15K. He's 19 right? This thing of Kate card is 21k. Uh, Thomason's 14. This guy's 15, right? These are just no risk investments at times. Fodder, and we're going to be making that sort of video more often on uh, every single Wednesday, the trading and investing guide for you guys on the new team of the week, because I think it's a really good way to make coins. It's a simple way to make coins, honestly. So I hope you guys did enjoy yesterday's video. Um, now, let's talk about, obviously, what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, we haven't really gotten much, uh, you know, news, really, for tomorrow. You know, we're kind of being left in the dark right now. I'm going to go and look at Fudwatch's tweets and just see if we have anything in the code. Uh, we did get League on Player of the Month today. No, we haven't really gotten anything in the code that would say that, okay, tomorrow is going to be, like, any sort of big promo. Um... So that's really interesting to me because EA doesn't really go too many weeks without, you know, doing a promo. So that's kind of, that's like really interesting to me that uh, they haven't really gone in, you know, put anything in the code really um, for a, a potential promo tomorrow. I would say for you guys, like if we don't get a promo tomorrow, I could see the market rising a little bit more tomorrow night uh, because, you know, people have the go ahead. They'll pretty much be able to, you know, go out and, and, you know, buy teams if they or buy players that they need for their teams. I would expect a, a higher market rise. And the market that I think would go up probably the most tomorrow, if we don't really get much content, is the icon market. And the icon market, like every market today, has not really gone up too much today. And, you know, this is kind of like a, you know, this is going to be like a Thursday flip like discussion, right? I saw this in another Twitch chat. I'm not going to say who it was. I, I, This is not my idea, but I think this is a really good shout for what's going on Thursdays. Recently, I think a lot of people are not really, and we've always talked about it. We don't think people are buying teams anymore on Thursdays. That is true. I don't see people buying teams. A lot of these untradeable objectives, you know, people have untradeable cards in their club. They don't need to buy these cards, right? Every untradeable in their club gives less market buying power uh on thursday flips okay so what i think is maybe happening is people are using 
Thursday's rewards, the coins that they're getting into their club, to buy fodder, to buy other things on the market that is related to SBCs because they want to participate in the content, right? Remember how we always talked about how like FIFA is turning into a menu content type game and people every single week are less and less playing the game? That is probably what has been happening recently, really, is that, you know, look at what happened today, for example, right? Fodder got low, obviously, during rewards with all the supply, right? What would people be able to go and do? They can go do the El Shirari SBC. They can go and do a base or mid icon if they want to. They can go do Tadebo, right? Why would I go buy a French center back when I can go buy this new cool design on Tadebo with 80 plus pace and 80 dribbling, 87 defending, and 84 physical, right? I can go do this Yasichi if I wanted to. I can go and do now the party bag, right? You have these UEFA marking matchups you can do, right? All of these things that people can do. Ribery is still here. Gundogan is there. All of this stuff is there for people to go and grind. And they might be using their rewards um, for fodder purposes, like doing SBCs and, and maybe even upgrade packs as well, um, using the players that they get. Like, I have players in my club that later on stream today and we're going to be live like just probably after this video comes out but you know we're going to be putting some of these players into some of these upgrades to go pack some of these future star cards because i don't think a lot of people want to buy cards off this market that i think they're starting to realize that the gameplay is just not really worth it to them now if they get it untradeable then they'll obviously play with them but if it, they don't want to use them as much as like maybe they used to especially on thursdays so that's kind of like really hurting the thursday market rise recently and i don't think he is doing it um, like a favor to anybody either um the market is getting higher on wednesdays because that's investors that are buying into stuff so you know we'll see what happens in the future with thursday flipping but yeah it's it's been tough recently we really didn't see much rise today um we'll go again next week obviously that's why i didn't really give you guys too many thursday flipping investments i know content went up a little bit i think it went to like 128 uh 129 a peak but didn't really rise as much as like people wanted um and it's just too many investors i think too many people that don't really want to buy players on the market on thursdays and i think this growing knowledge of you know thursdays is not a kind of day that people will buy teams anymore right you might think like okay thursday is going to be the only day the market rises because of division rivals but people know that div er, people know that you shouldn't buy your teams on thursdays or fridays they know that you should buy your team Saturday night and Sundays, which is maybe why we didn't see much of a weekendly sell-off over the last couple of weeks. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, those are some future star investments. That was kind of like some Thursday flipping discussion. It is what it is. Uh, we're going to have to keep, you know, rolling on with this. Thank you for watching the video today. I appreciate it. Come subscribe if you're new around here and I'll talk to you guys in the video soon. Peace out.